Want to win money on sports? With Underdog, you can up to a 1,000 times your cash just by picking higher or lower on your favorite player's stats. Millions of fans have won billions of dollars on Underdog. Will you be next? Download the Underdog app and sign up to get a free pick with your first cash entry up to a $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama, Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXTSTEP to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope Line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny four six seven three six nine. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do, like, four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim-blaming here. Give it a try at midmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Lo and behold, a bittersweet day because it's the final installment of a Town Ball episode of the Weekly Scramble podcast here, and it's Reavers. It's my buddy Jeremy Stender. Once again, we got such tremendous feedback, and I am not exaggerating when I say that because, Jeremy, I got to tell you right off the get-go here, the Town Ball podcast that you and I did, well, roughly a week ago, whenever that was, last week, uh, ahead of the Labor Day finale of the State Amateur Baseball Tournament, I cannot tell you how many different people came up to me to, A, thank you and I, but me, because I was the only one there, thank us for doing the podcast first and foremost, and then, of course, ripping us because we didn't talk enough Class B baseball. But lo and behold, they all appreciated the fact that you and I did it, and I said, well, that's because Jeremy and I love town baseball. That's why we did it in the first place, and we love doing it. So anyway, thank you for making uh, time for me again this week, my man. No problem. Thank you. Um, this this is great. It, it's fun, and, and I'll – just to kind of echo what you said, it really, I was amazed by it. I mean, we, we've done this uh, like the last two or three years, and I've always had a number of people say stuff, right? And, you know, and, and most of it's always positive. And, but, yeah, I mean, over the course of the last five or six days, I'm not exaggerating when between whether it was in Green Isle on Friday night, Saturday I was over in Belle Plaine, Sunday over in Jordan, I had at least 50 different people say something. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, that's just crazy to me. I mean, people were listening and, you know, 99% of it was positive. The 1% that wasn't was just guys that like to give us a hard time and say that we weren't, <laughs> right. you know, we didn't talk, we didn't praise them enough or we didn't talk about them enough or yeah, you know, they're, you know, and, and you and I've never run from the fact that we're not B guys. So we apologize always up front, right? We're more familiar with class C and, you know, we're, we're a little, we're familiar with class B, but we, do, we just don't know as much about it for that. We apologize. Uh, we try and do as, as great of a job as we can when it comes to, to class B, but obviously class C is kind of where our roots were planted. Correct. So that's, natural that uh, we might know and talk a little bit more about uh, the seaside of things. And that's where I kind of want to start. And the, and the one guy that ripped me, and I, I'm going to use that term loosely because he was a fantastic guy, but did rip me about not talking enough class B, but ended that portion of the ripping with, can I buy you a beer? You know, like, so that's how that all went. But he was very thankful for that. But I do actually want to start with Class B. Hey, how does Town Ball bring us together? It's through beer. Oh, my God. Right? I mean, ultimately. And, and, it, and you know that firsthand. Oh, it was such weekend. a great, you know, volunteering this the over the course of these past three weekends because I live 1.23 miles from the Mini Met in Jordan. So it was a lot of fun for me and my two boys that are really starting to get bit by the Town Ball bug to be able to help out and, and see so many faces that you know you and I basically see once a year and it's around this time of the year for the state amateur tournament but it was great I mean Patrick drove down for the Sunday games um, and did a great piece on Scott Hollingsworth and the and the Jordan Brewers uh, but of course you know he had to rip me a new one because I told him to, to take the wrong turn you know coming into the uh, coming into the park but, but, but in any event I did want to start with class B um, and I wanted to start with 
the Champlin Park Logators, who up until just a couple of weeks ago, I really didn't have any idea about their squad. I mean, I obviously know just because I follow the brackets that they typically have a really good team. And I got to give a shout out to Louie Walker. His mom is actually in our sales department here at Hubbard. So I was, she and I kind of bonded over the fact that uh, they were going to be playing in Jordan. But so these guys came to our park. This would have been on Saturday. We had two Class B games before the third game, which was the Class C game between Sartell and Fairmont, knowing that we were going to have three Class C matchups on Sunday leading up to the championship game on Monday. And I got to tell you, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Champlin Park, but they've got a dude on that team. His name is Ethan Maki, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Number yep. 44, this boy can mash to the point, Jeremy, where we were out Sunday morning. He hit a ball at the mini met on Sunday. I think this was either his fourth or fifth hit. I can't remember. It never peaked at 25 feet and almost went over the wall. It was an absolute missile and it hit the very top of the wall where that indentation comes in at the mini met from that left center field um, light tower. And so when we were mm-hmm. out there inspecting like boards and warning track and all that stuff, and I looked up and I said, Holy S the white ball mark was still there. The indentation was still there, you know, basically t- uh, 20 hours after he hit the thing. Those guys those guys were a lot of fun. I found myself rooting for, for Champlain Park over the weekend. Yeah, they're, they're a good group. And, and he's been a part of, I remember when we did the Waconia Chaska Hamburg podcast that sure. I had on, I had you on, um, you know, back then when we did that podcast for Waconia and Chaska and Hamburg and, 21 i gotta get yep, the years it right. was it was 2021 but, yep yeah I, I know he was on the all tournament the class b all tournament team you know they've got a guy named sam riola who's kind of you know he's kind of their guy too whether it's at the plate or on the mound um was it matt merrick has been i mean he's been around forever he's kind of famous on twitter right he's one of <laughs> the the most common names that you hear about uh in class b so yeah they're they're a great team and, and they kind of I almost want to say that they're they're sharing a little bit like right now and like my young America Cardinals of getting so damn close. Yep. <laughs> just you know something tripping them up because you know was it two years ago when you guys hosted? I think they lost in the Class B championship. You know this year they knock off St. Louis Park in the quarters, who was we know the Class A champion two years ago, and then they take the eventual champion Meesville and, and lose four to three. So a team that's been knocking on the door for a long, long time, but uh, just hasn't been able to punch through very, very good baseball team. Yeah. And they're, they're always, you know, right there in the mix at the end. And that's, what's kind of so different and odd. Like you were saying earlier about class B is yes, you probably have your perennials, but what was neat was uh, I was actually talking to the Beckman boys from the Jordan Brewers on one of their days that they weren't playing and it was interesting how different the crowds could have possibly been when a team like Dundas, you know, lost their first game and a team like Chaska, you know, lost their first game. Those are class B teams that have a massive following and how different those attendance totals might have been. And, and that's not what you're really rooting for. I mean, I guess as a host, that's what you're rooting for. But it's kind of weird because uh, I was talking to a guy, a really good class C baseball player that said, you know, what's what's really hard is that this is really good baseball, even though there's not as big of an atmosphere for it, but the baseball itself is unreal. Oh, it's, it's spectacular. I mean, I, I I think I talked about it briefly last week on the pod, you know, with young America being in class B, you know, for the previous two seasons prior to 2024, I got a firsthand look at it because, you know, a lot of those teams came out to young America and played. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I, you know, and, and the difference, the difference between class B and class C isn't always that you've got just, maybe guys that are just as talented in class C. You just don't have as many. Yeah. Right. And yep. I mean, a lot of these teams, you know, they've got, let's say 16 or 17 guys on their roster and 14 or 15 are former college players. Right. And yeah. eight or nine of them pitch. Well, you, you know, in class C, you know, on your typical team, you might have on the really good teams, you maybe have a half a dozen, maybe a little, maybe a few teams 
have a few more than that, but you kind of also have your pretty old reliable, right? Three or four arms that you lean on. There might be some other guys that you go to, but you know, it, it just gets a little thinner. So, I mean, I be, I was fortunate last year and this year that there were t- there were moments when I called games around some of those A B games. So either I got to see you know the game previous before doing a broadcast, or we did a broadcast and the game after us was Class B. And I mean the baseball, the talent level, it's really good. Yeah, no um, doubt. You know, I, I talked last week that I watched the Meadsville Mud Hens and the and the St. Paul Mud Hens and. Boy, I mean, St. Paul Mudhens probably kicking themselves, right? I mean, they had Meesville beat two weekends ago uh, over in Green Isle. I think they were up five to nothing at one point. Ended up losing eight to six and ten. And lo and behold, who wins the state tournament? Meesville Mudhens. We talked how many times in the last three years, Reavers, have we talked about the razor thin margins and little things needing to break your way? And you know that was one where where Meesville. I mean, in that game, Chris, they had two guys picked off at first base in the eighth inning. Wow. And it's like, what are you guys doing? Right. I mean, and lo and behold, they, they found a way to take the lead in the top of the ninth. St. Paul tied it. And then Meesville hits a two run Homer, uh, you know, in the 10th and they end up advancing. They get by Hopkins. We talked about them beating Champlin and then they defeat the defending state champion. So you know, Meesville back to kind of a familiar spot. They're the champions in Class B. Congratulations to them. I think it was Ronnie Sweeney, the uh, Fred Roof's MVP. Uh, no surprise, Graham Lobsher from Air Freight Unlimited, the most outstanding pitcher, right? I mean, he, I think with 3-0 and record, his ERA was right around one. I think he struck out 45 guys in 25 innings, which is, you know, that's just remarkable. That's over 60% of your outs are strikeouts. So, uh, you know, yeah, the baseball is phenomenal in Class B. And, um, you know, for people who maybe, you know, haven't taken that in, because let's be honest, you know, some of us C fans can be a little, well, this is what we like, right? This is a little bit better for our taste. But, again, I just encourage people, if you love watching good baseball, you, you owe it to yourself to take in some of those games as well. No doubt. And I think that they did, they being the state board, I think they did a good job of really spreading the wealth and kind of mixing in Class C and Class B games throughout the entire tournament. Was it perfect? Well, of course not. It's never going to be. You're never going to make everybody happy. But that's because, you know, in some cases you might be looking at a potential matchup and that potential matchup doesn't happen. And that's the beauty of, of the single elimination format for this tournament where, you know, let, let's just, let's, let's cut to the chase. You know, if, if, if Jordan faces Waconia on a different day, there's probably a different outcome, but that's not how the tournament works, you know, or, or some, somebody's not available for a certain day or for a certain weekend. That's the beauty of this tournament is you've got to just catch a team at the right time, or you've just got to play better. You know, you know what I'm saying? And so I think that that's why I really like the way that they laid out, you know, the entire tournament throughout the course of the three weekends because there's always going to be a mismatch here and there and there's always going to be a team that probably got in when they probably didn't uh, deserve or you know what I'm saying so I think they do a really good job of trying to trying to spread that wealth but also trying to give each each of those fans a little taste because after you know your your club wins you're going to probably chances are you're going to stick around and have a couple of pops and watch the next baseball game well you had like uh, I mean I think it was Saturday morning over in Green Isle you know, air freight taking on Minnetonka. You know, if, if you're a baseball person, you know, you know about Lobster, right? We've talked about him a lot last year after his MVP performance when air freight won it. And then, you know, Minnetonka, now the, the Monarchs, but but still the Millers, right? To mm-hmm. a lot of people, when, when you look at it, um, probably the most storied, um, quote unquote, class A team in the entire state, right? So, you know, you get a matchup like that, and then it's immediately followed by Lions, Lions Pub taking on Burnsville. So, yeah, it, it's great. And like I said, you mentioned it too. They kind of did their best to intermingle games where, you know, you might have, you know, 1B and then 2C, or you might have a C and then 2B. But but just kind of making it to, to maybe see if some of those people wouldn't stick around or people yep. would come early. And, you know, I I think that it's a a step in the right direction. And I think that when you even look at it, 
you know, at a few of the, the B games that I was around this year, it just seemed like there were a few more people. Now, is it because some of them were maybe the, the quote unquote right teams? I don't know. But I also like to think that maybe it's just baseball people saying, hey, you know what? I mean, we know it. we've got a we've got a ton of baseball people, you know, in your area where you're at, yeah. you know, right now in Jordan, here in Crow River land, North Star land that they're, they're going to state tournaments out, down in the DRS. They're going to state tournaments no matter where they are because they love baseball and they like to watch baseball. And I think more and more of those people after the last two years are also taking in more of these B games because they've realized, holy cow, this is really, really good baseball, which I don't think any of us ever denied. But that also maybe helps long-term with a little bit of the atmosphere, you know, around it. Right. No and I, I think that it's definitely a step in the right direction. All right. So because I don't want to get any more crap from the Jordan Brewer baseball club, because apparently I was confronted by uh, Joe Lucas, the center fielder and number three hitter for the Brewers for quote unquote, not talking about us enough on last week's podcast. And I said, Joe, I freaking picked you guys to win it in any event. <laughs> so um, a really cool moment because you, uh, I want to go, I want to kind of cut to, well, A, I want to give Scotty a little, a little shout out Friday night. They're playing Sox center. 48 year old Scott Hollingsworth is on the mound. And as I tweeted out before the game, cause he saw me coming down to the bullpen, I said, let's take a quick selfie. And he said, no, cause you're going to rip me on social media. And so of course I put out always great to watch your childhood heroes throw in a town baseball <laughs> game, which he loved tremendously, but he, it was a great, great for him. I felt so good for him because I know how much he loves the game. His son and stepson play with my oldest kid, play travel ball, play all sorts of sports with my eldest kid. So it was just kind of, that was a kind of a cool moment, but I got to tell you, man, my favorite moment of the entire tournament happened on Sunday morning. Cause I've just kind of become a really big fan of the Buckman Billy goats. And it goes back two years from when they came, they came and they conquered my city of Faribault, Minnesota, and they made it all the way to the state championship. And unfortunately they fell to their, their region rival in, in, in Niswa. But it was kind of a cool matchup because Buckman's a really good team. They got a lot of really good players, and they had they had Jordan down. I think it was two. They were up two nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning, and the aforementioned Joe Lucas is up, and I'm standing next to Joe's brother Jeff. Right, Jeff was mm-hmm. the state heavyweight champion for the Scott West wrestling program, and Joe hit that. I mean, it was a nuke. That thing was smoked, and I thought Jeff was going to body slam me up against the the equipment room because he was so jacked up. But that place went nuts the second that that happened, and then, of course, Jordan went on to win that game. But that atmosphere for both that game against Buckman and then, of course, after that against your Young America Cardinals, that entire day at the mini met in Jordan completely symbolized exactly what makes town baseball. Awesome. Because the fans were amazing. The place was electric and Oh, by the way, the baseball was really good too. So I'll tell you this because I wasn't there to see Joe's home run, but I heard it. Oh, and, and you're thinking, wait, wait, what are you talking about? Well, we, you know, we come into Jordan. I'm in with my wife and two kids because young America plays in the game. Right after it, I got our guys up and going, and they're doing the our Waconia game. Um, I think Waconia was playing Bird Island at the time. And, you know, we get into where you turn to go up to the park, and, you know, there's the, there's a road close sign, right? Lots full. Yep. So kind of know that. So, you know, we park, I don't know, maybe not a half a mile, but it, over a quarter of a mile away, right? And we get out of our car, and we were listening – to uh, Adam Bartle's uh, call of that game. So we knew that at the time it was two to nothing. Um, Buckman was winning and we had gotten out of the, gotten out of the car, locked everything up, car beeps. And we kind of, we walk about, you know, maybe a quarter of a mile. And all of a sudden we hear what's just the loudest scream oh. from about you know, almost probably half a mile away. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, Something really good just happened for Jordan. And then we get there and we're walking up the road, you know, in left field or whatever and run into someone we know. And and, and he's like, dude, this guy from Jordan just hit one over the railroad tracks. And if people aren't familiar yeah. with the railroad tracks, you know, we're talking 60 feet beyond the left field fence. Minimum. I mean, minimum. Yeah. yeah. Minimum. And, you know, and so 
I was like, okay, you know, kind of curious, you know, running through my mind, okay, who are the one or two or three guys from Jordan that are capable of doing that? Of course, I was no surprise when I walked in and one of the state board members is like, you should have just saw the home run Lucas hit. <laughs> and that's like, okay, well, that makes, that makes sense. But, you know, and then, then the Brewers, the, the Brewers kind of went from there. And, you know, baseball is a funny game and I'm, I'm kind of going down, you know, another avenue. And I know we're going to, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, different things. And we're going to talk about that crowd on Monday, but, you know, just, just sharing, you know, two things about baseball and how we always talk about how you need things to go your way, or you need things to break your way. I mean, Jordan going into the championship game on Monday, Chris had outscored their opponents 28 to four. Wow. Their, their close, their closest game was that, I mean, the first round they beat cold spring five zip. Is you know, that, I did not America. realize that. Wow. Yeah, they, they beat Young America 6-zip. They beat Buckman 8-2. They beat Sox Center 9-2. I mean, everything was convincing, right? Now, flip it, and let's look at the Waconia Lakers. And, you know, okay, Waconia breezed through their first game. Um, you know, we know about John Bezdechek's no-hitter. Both of us were in the park for that the previous yep. week against Montgomery. And, and I knew this when we were doing the podcast last week but i i wasn't gonna say it on the podcast because i just i wouldn't say that about any team because i don't like putting that stuff out there but i had heard firsthand he's not gonna be here this weekend he's not you know the only chance the lakers got to get to monday um you know for john bez to check to be in the ballpark and you know, I, I'm kind of looking at things, and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, they play Bemidji. Bemidji's a really good team. I know about them, but I also know that, you know, Waconia's got a really good draftee in Blake Trish. They had three really good draftees, and it was almost like that was a little bit of a rallying cry for the Lakers, right? Um, it, it's like, you know, and, and this is how every team approaches it, but for Waconia, it's like we're doing everything everything we absolutely can do to get to Monday because what's the ace up our sleeve? Sure. We've got probably the best pitcher in all of class C is going to be in the ballpark if we can get there. And, you know, they beat Bemidji and, and where I go back, where we always talk, we've talked about, you know, the, the crucial air or the bad hop or the big two out hit, you know, that, that maybe swung something, right? We talked about Niswa two years ago being down to Raymond in the bottom of the eighth inning and scoring like three or four runs. You know, we talked about Maple Lake almost being out last year on the first their first game of the state tournament, and they go on to win it. Well, you know, the play of the tournament for me, and, and I was just listening to it. I, I didn't get to witness it, but people I've talked to and, the way the radio announcers called it, Justin Schultz, who's a member of the all tournament team for the Waconia Lakers, um, made a diving catch out in left field on Sunday in Waconia's first game against Bird Island. Bird Island's winning two to one, Chris. There's one out and the bases are loaded for Bird Island. And and he makes a catch. I mean, the announcers were flipping out, right? I mean, like he came out of nowhere. And the runners were just going because there was no chance in hell he was getting there, right? Yep. He made the catch. They doubled the runner off a second. He doesn't make that catch, Reavers. Waconia's down at least four to one, maybe five to one in, in the bottom of the, you know, going into the bottom of the fourth. Instead, it's just two to one. Waconia scores two to go up three to two, and they kind of take control of the game. Man. And. You know, we all know the story from there, right? I mean, they, they go on to beat Buffalo. We see what they get Bez to check on Monday. But, you know, that one play from Justin Schultz, and I, I texted um, Waconia manager Mike Frederick on, on, on Monday night. I knew I probably wasn't going to get an answer because I know that the Lakers were having a little party over at Lions Field. <laughs> and, you know, just congratulated them, you know, told them how proud I was. They, they deserved this, right? And, um, you know, he responded that night. And, and Mike's one of the most humble guys you're ever going to meet, right? I mean, and he said, he goes, you know, Jeremy, he goes, I just don't think how people or people just don't realize how many things need to go your way. Yep. He goes, we're a really good team. We're a great team. 
but he goes, Jordan's a great team. Young America's a great team. Buffalo's a great team. Bird Island's a great team. He goes, all of these teams are great teams. It's just who got the break at the right time. And, you know, by no means is he necessarily saying that's the only reason they won it because they're great. But, you know, to hear a manager, you know, fully acknowledge that, right? And it's also a tip of the cap to your opponents because he knows how great these teams are. He knows that maybe there's just that little bit of luck that needs to go into it because all of the other teams are really damn good too, right? So I, I thought it was just great how Mike kind of summed that up, but I, I still I just go back to that play, and I think if, if Justin Schultz doesn't make that play, I think there's a really good chance we're talking about someone else. And I don't know. Is it is it Bird Island? Is it Jordan? Did, does something else change? You know, is it sure. Buffalo? Because then Buffalo beats Bird Island. We don't know. We'll never know. But Justin Schultz made that play at that time, got that double play, saved his team at least two or three runs. And for Waconia, you know, from there, it was it was almost like it was destiny. And that's baseball. That's why we love it. 100%. And that's why, you know, I've always said to people that, you know, are experiencing, we got to give a quick shout out to my guy. And well, he was your guy before he was my guy, but Eric Dvorak, one of the youth football coaches who, who has now been bit by the, uh, been bit by the town ball bug. And I was trying to explain to him, I said, Eric, I said, you don't get to Labor Day weekend if you're not a good team. Like that, that yeah. There's there's ways that you can kind of uh, get hot during a region, or you can you know win a game here in the state tournament if you've got a guy. But you don't make it to Labor Day weekend unless you're a good team, right? And so I was trying to explain that to him, and that's why it was so cool the way that a lot of these matchups kind of unfolded. And again, you and I said this a week ago. If it's Jordan Young America Sunday night to go to the championship game, you know, hide the women and children. And that game, yeah, it was the score c- close. I mean, I, I thought it was a great game. I really did. Um, the, the thing was, in my opinion, I got to give, uh, I, I hope that they don't mind that I'm sharing this story. And I think they won't because I know Matt Moggers really well. But Louie, as a draftee pitching for the Brewers against YA from St. Clair, Apparently, he was told that he had a pitch count by his college coach, who just so also happens to be his dad. And apparently, he came off the mound after hitting that pitch count, looked at Brewers manager Jason Chalupski, who's also an unbelievably great dude, and just said, you ain't taking me out of this bleeping game right now. (laughs) But again, there you have a guy who probably with his own team might not have that opportunity to to, to, to be in that spot and maybe one day will, but could feel the juice, could feel how, uh, how important of a spot that this was and just said, I'm a competitor. I love baseball. I ain't coming out of this freaking game, right? It, it, it was the same thing that happened, Reavers, in the game prior when Young America played Fairmont. Um, you know, uh, Plato Blue Jays draftee Reese Schwartz. Perfect example. One, yep. one nothing shutout, right? And he, he was just dialed in and he got into a little bit of trouble well, not a little bit of trouble a lot of trouble in that seventh inning where the bases are loaded and all of a sudden there's this guy named luke becker coming up to the plate you know former minor leaguer and everyone's kind of ooh, what do you what do you do and and he throws probably the best change up reese kind of he told me this that night at uh, last call uh, over in young america the, the local watering hole where where the cardinals gathered to kind of commiserate the end of the season and and I said, man, how did how did you how did you have the fortitude or will in you to throw that off speed pitch, you know, to, to Becker? And he said, well, he barreled me up twice on fastballs, right? Luckily, right at guys. And he goes, I had to think because it was three two, and there's no place to put him. He knows what's coming, right? And he goes, I and, and he got a big strikeout. And I was standing out in left field uh, on the road with with a few other uh, Young America fans. And by the way, shout out to the Jordan Brewers. You might need to repave that road out there for me (laughs) walking back and forth because I think I got my daily steps in just pacing during that game. But, you know, in in one of our one of the fans, actually, I think it was Braden Coles, uh, one of Young America's better hitters. His dad said something along the lines of, you know, are you? Do you, do you bring Reese back out there? And another person said, absolutely you do. Yeah. And, and Reese said that night, he goes, there's no way you were getting the ball from me. No. You know, it's a one nothing game. I, I'm going back out there. And I just think it's cool that that's another one of the really fun things, 
you know, that we kind of see in Class C. You know, there, there's some people who think, ah, the draft should go away or we don't need it. And, and I get what they're saying. But, man, it, it, it's fun, too, sometimes when you see these guys, you know, buying in. Like, I, I look at the video of Laconia running out onto the field and who are three of the biggest kids running out onto the field? The three draftees. The three right? draftees, yeah. Yep. You know, and, and all three of them played a huge part for Waconia to, to be able to win. They don't win that championship without either one of those three draftees. So I think that it's just that, that commitment, that investment, and, you know, it's just so fun to kind of see it all uh, come together. But, you know, yeah, I mean, going back to – to, to that Sunday, you know, the Jordan Young America game. I mean, the, the park was electric, right, when it got started. And, you know, I, you know, Nate Beckman was incredible on the mound. Um, you know, I, I didn't know that Young America's bats could go that silent from having watched them, you know, all year. And, you know, I think when I, you know, Br- Brandon Stender sent me a, a text, uh, you know, on, on Tuesday morning, you know, he, he was still commiserating, right? And he's just going over stuff. And he's like, man, we hit 205 for the tournament. We hit a buck 50 with runners in scoring position. You know, all of these little things, yep, right? And, yep. You know, Young America scored nine runs. Underdog is the place to play if you're a sports fan looking to win money while watching sports. With over 5 million happy players and $2 billion won, Underdog makes it fun and easy to cash in on all your favorite athletes' performances. So you can make a play with only $1 or go big and win up to 1,000 times your money. It's currently Boostober on Underdog where there's a promo to play nearly every day. Underdog is literally giving you unlimited profit boost to make basketball picks. Underdog is the best place to pick them, so sign up and deposit now using the promo code SCREEN. Scramble to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash instantly. All you got to do is select higher or lower on your favorite players and cash in Underdog. Must be 18 plus. 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska. 19 plus in Colorado for some games. 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona. And present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 533 533- Four two in New York. Call the twenty four seven Hope Line at one eight seven seven eight Hope N Y or text Hope N Y to four six seven three six nine. In four state tournament games and somehow made the state semifinals. So that tells you how good they are and how how good their pitching is. They just they, they, their bats kind of went silent at the wrong time. And those are the those are those little things again where you know, we kept saying out in left field, even in that second game against Jordan, we're like, this team is too good of a hitting team to just, just to lay over and go to bed. Right. I mean, they've got to, they're going to find a way to generate, you know, four or five runs here against Jordan, but is that going to be enough offense? And turns out if we had scored those four or five, that might not have been enough, you know, losing to Jordan six to nothing. But I mean, that was a a fun day at, uh, you know, at the mini met, you know, and I, I just love that atmosphere um, when you've got, you know, what was the paid attendance? Just under 1,800 on Sunday, yeah. you know, and then 2,200 on Monday. It was, I mean, think about that. It was crazy. You know? And that's and that's where yeah. I kind of wanted to go to, Jeremy, because it was crazy where we, we were talking about this before the game because – we had a 1 o'clock first pitch. Well, first of all, I got scolded because we had an 11 o'clock first pitch on Sunday, and I was, quote-unquote, late by coming at 8.15 on, on, on Sunday morning, and I said, looked at the uh, – I won't name I won't name who, who said this to me, <clears throat> Jason Chalevsky, but he said, you're late. And I said, go ahead and take it out of my paycheck, you know. <laughs> but he, And he laughed like, we, we get it, we get it. And I kind of had one of those roles – throughout the entire tournament because I told them, I said, hey, I, I am not doing what I did two years ago with Faribault where I've got to go to every you know program meeting and everything else. I go, I just want to help out. I want to be at the games. I want to enjoy it. But I, you know, and, and that's basically what my role was. Hey, today we need you to do grounds crew. Hey, today we need you to, to work in the burger stand. Hey, today we need you to do tickets. Like that's exactly what I wanted my role to be where wherever we just needed people, that's where I was going to help out. And that tra- let's transition then to championship Monday where we started to talk about, well, I wonder, are we going to get people to show up? That was, I'm not joking. That was a legit wow. talking point because you just don't know, right? You think, okay, did people go up to the lake? Are people coming back from the lake? Well, apparently 
uh, someone from town had said, well, I was getting texts from all sorts of people. Did the Brewers win? Did the Brewers win? What time is the game? What time is the game? So many people left the lake to make it back in time for the 1 o'clock game to the point where, I'm not joking, it's 1130. It's an hour and a half before the game, and I get a text from my guy Ray. Ray was in charge of parking and, you know, I'm I'm using this term loosely, but security, right? And he said, you got to get up here, Reeves. I need help right now. And so I I sprinted up there knowing, all right, we're at DEFCON 5 here, right? So I sprinted (laughs) up there, and he said, he looked at me like frantically, like, Reeves, there's nowhere to put these cars. And there was a line of cars trying to get into the Minimet. And so I started to calmly you know, walk down and say, hey, folks, I'm so sorry. If you need to drop off uh, players or the elderly, go ahead. But you're going to need to turn around and try to fill up that lower uh, parking spot that's right behind the right field wall. And then if and then we're going to have to probably move people to the church parking lot, which is about two blocks away. And as I kept walking down, I could tell people's not anger, but uh, disappointment was starting to grow because they knew, okay, this this dumbass with his volunteer shirt on isn't going to be giving me good news. So I finally got the barricade, which says road or lot closed. You know, I, I, I had that set up. And this woman from Waconia, I would guess she's in her early 60s. And I could hear her drive around it because I'm walking back up towards the stadium. And I just kind of went, oh, God. So I turned around and I said, uh, and I kind of held my hand up like, stop. And she's like, well, I need to get to the game. And I said, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I said, the the lot's full. If you need to drop someone or something off, you can, but you're going to need to loop around and come back here because there's nowhere to park your car. And then she berated me for a minute, which I get, you know, you're a little frustrated because mm-hmm. you're just trying to get there. It's still like an hour before the game. And she said, well, you needed to let me know. And I said, you mean that giant barricade that you just decided to drive by wasn't an indication? (laughs) And then she could figure out that, oh, yeah, it probably wasn't wise. So anyway, and then there was also a a car full of the Waconia players, and this is probably close to noon, and he says, wasn't there a player parking lot? I said, yeah, uh, it's about an hour to game time. She got filled up pretty quick. So it was, you know, there was a little bit of moments here and there, but other than that, everybody else, totally understood everything else was great like i said we had 2200 p over 2200 people at a freaking town baseball game you know at the end of this at the end of the summer it it i mean obviously the the locals wanted the wanted the brewers to win you know of course that that was but part of the script but i don't think you could have asked for a better labor day weekend than than what happened outside of the brewers you know winning for for the local fans for sure i don't think so and the other thing that, you know, Adam Bartles, who I know you know as well, you know, he had texted me. It must have been at like 1130, quarter to 12. And he's like, you wouldn't believe what this place looks like right now. And, you know, and, and then when they went on the air and they're just talking about, you know, you, you couldn't even that you couldn't even fall over right now in this ballpark no. because someone would catch you. Yeah. That it was just shoulder to shoulder and. Um, you know, and you think about 2,200 people, right? I mean, 2,200. I mean, that's just a ridiculous uh, number of people, you know, you know, there to watch that game. And, and really, you know, sometimes we talk about matchups, right? And, you know, you hosted, you were as one of the uh, tri-chairs or co-chairs in, in Faribault a couple of years ago. You know, let's be honest, you're always looking at matchups. And sometimes yep. matchups don't break your way, but, you know, think about it. You had, you know, just in the final eight, you had Jordan and Buckman, you had young America, you had Cortland, who's kind of a, you know, they're kind of new to this whole thing, but they have a big following. You had bird Island, you had Waconia and, you know, you had some teams that had some pretty big followings, right? You got a Jordan young America matchup that when, when the bracket came out, you know, I was sitting next to, to Scott Hollingsworth because we did that bracket reveal show. And I said, you see the same thing I see, don't you? And you know, he just kind of nods his head and smiles, right? We're thinking, yep, it could be, you know, Jordan and and young America in that final four. And then as things started to piece together throughout the weekend, you start thinking, well, you know what? Laconia is only, you know, 20 miles away too. And we know that they have a big following. So things kind of started to now, 
I, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Young America wins, and we have Young America and Waconia. Okay, because, you know, it's not the Jordan Brewers. It's not the local team. You're not going to have 22 in the park. But I guarantee you there would have been – 17 or 1800 you know there there were going to be a lot there for that one too so everything you know that that's another thing you know sometimes the fan thing breaks your way a little bit more and i think that you know all three of the sites kind of saw a little bit of that particularly the mini met uh just on sunday and monday to to kind of look at those crowds i mean when you figure 2200 paid um 1700 plus paid Reavers, you're talking about 4,000 town ball fans, yep. paid town yep. ball fans, in the park in two days. I mean, how do you not love town ball? Well, that's right? just it. <laughs> Jeremy, I, I said this to, to Patrick, because Patrick and I did Monday Night Sports Talk earlier. I said, Pat... We had tw- it was the the number was twenty two oh two that we paid, and by the way, uh, the two tickets were my two kids that I did pay two kid tickets for a dollar because I wanted to make sure that they were paid and accounted for. We had twenty two oh two paid right admission. Mm-hmm. We had at least another one hundred and fifty of us freeloaders that were there volunteering between grounds crew concession uh, uh, scoreboard everything else that were there, and then you have. Two teams and the state board, which is at least another hundred people. You were talking to, uh, to the point where, and I got to give him a huge shout out, um, Scotty Brimehorst, who was uh, on the the O four state tournament championship Jordan Brewer team, longtime Jordan Brewer, now leadoff hitter for the thirty five and over Jordan Miller's baseball team, and he was running the ticket counter, and he was doing he and that crew were doing such a great job where. He was just basically taking a roll of tickets saying, hey, if you got cash and you're an adult, find me, right? So that we were getting people in, in, in. We weren't making people wait way too long. And to the point where the people that were standing along the left field, uh, behind the left field fence, we just said, well, what are we going to do? There's nowhere to put people. And then the state board just said, just ask for five bucks, right? Five bucks. First of all, the people that are standing behind that left field wall you got a greater vantage point than half the people that are inside the stadium right now. And everybody and everybody that was approached about that completely complied, right? They, they, they got and understood that they were part of something really cool on Monday. And so shout out to Scotty and the entire Jordan Miller's uh, club between front desk and, and, and tickets to concessions for the Miller burgers and everything else. Cause they did such a tremendous job throughout the entire tournament, but Monday specifically, it was awesome. It was. It, it, it's always, you know, and it, it's always disappointing. I mean, it's. I, I always think of for, you know, for me selfishly. I mean, it's five long weekends, and don't get me wrong, I love it. It's five, two weekends for our region tournament, three weekends for the state tournament, and it it gets old. I mean, it's a lot of time. I'm I'm away from my family. You got you got a yep. chance to actually meet my my family. Yep. You know, on Sunday when we were at the mini mat and. You know, it it gets to the end, and you're kind of ready for it to be over. And then when it's over, it's like, now what? Now you know, what? You're, you're yes. Left in this, you're kind of left in this space. I mean, like I'm looking at the weather this weekend, and I'm seeing 70s and sunny, and probably going to spend a day on a golf course. And, and but but at the same time, in the back of my mind, going to be thinking, ah, I miss baseball. Yep. Right. I mean, that's kind of what I've what I've done. And, and I think that, you know, whether it's, you know, what my, the Crow river family or the region seven family, or, you know, my young America Cardinals family, you know, that's kind of your summer family. Right. And, you know, you, you're friends with all these people, you get to know them and, you know, now, now it's not that it's not real life during baseball season, but now kids are back to school. Like I saw your, you know, your picture the other day on social media, sending your kids back, our kids are back. And and now it's volleyball and it's football and it's, you know, all traveling teams and everything that we've got going. And, and and it's almost sort of like life resumes and everyone kind of goes their separate ways. And, you know, you miss those people, right? Because you're used to seeing them for three months out of the year where you hang out with them at the park or, um, so, yeah, so there's always a little bit of, um, you know, relief when it's over. But then at the same time, there's just that sadness. And it's like, yep. 
golly, we've got like eight months yep. until we it's, get to start doing this again. I always use this word, but it's completely bittersweet. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, after the game was over with on Monday and, and my kids uh, came up and they said, well, what are we doing for dinner? I'm just thinking, let's just let's just hang for a little bit. So my my little guy got to drag the field for a little bit, you know, and it was just none of us really wanted to leave the park. You know, we were just mm-hmm. kind of hanging, kind of soaking it up, having a beverage. And then it was just, you know, like let's just let's just bask for a little bit. But yeah, let's my feet are tired. I've probably put on 150,000 steps these last three weekends. Like I just I I'm just want to enjoy the, the the moment for a little bit, and that's why I I remember I walked up to two people. I wanted to make sure I walked up to two people specifically after that uh, uh, game, uh, uh, the the championship game in which Waconia beat Jordan at the mini mat, and I walked up to Nate Beckman and I said, "Dude, do not hang your head. Like that's a really good team. You gave your club a chance to win. Like he that kid. First of all, you're, I'm just a fan because he's just a he's a ball player." And I'm thinking, you 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 gutted that thing out. You gave your club a chance, right? They were just facing, obviously, the best pitcher in the state of Minnesota. Oh. And, and, and the other guy I felt bad for was Johnny Draheim, the, the catcher for the Brewers that unfortunately uh, struck out to end the game. And I'm thinking, there is nobody that embodies town ball more than Johnny. And I'm, and I'm going to give him a shout out here because, you know, he's the nicest kid in the team. He coaches youth football. He coaches on the varsity football team. He's that guy that's always at the volunteer youth baseball stuff. He's always asking me about my kids. How, hey, how, how's Leland's team doing? How's Williams? Like, he's just that guy. And it was like, oh, no, don't let it be Johnny that ends the You know what I mean? It was one yep. of those things where you just, your heart wept for that kid. But, you know, hey, but again, like you were saying, that's baseball, right? That's that's part of the game. That's why we that's why we lace them up. That's why we put the uniform on. Is for th- things like that and moments like that too. That's exactly right. And you know where it kind of it, it hit me a little bit more on Monday because it's like you know I wasn't there on Monday, but then um, you know I had saw some of the drone pictures and you know some of the crazy videos from the park and how full it was. And then, you know, our one of our buddies, Rhino, you know, Town Ball Tuesday, oh, yeah. had taken a picture in left field. And, you know, there were like eight to ten kids playing out in the field, but the park was empty, yep. right? And you could see a few people hanging out up by the concession stand area. And it's kind of like, you know, you had all those people descend on that one spot to watch that game and, and now they were all gone. And it, and it was kind of like, you know, it, it's almost a little bit in a way like a funeral, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> they put the mini met to bed, right? Yeah. It, you know, the, the season's over and, and, and just all of these finalities. And it's kind of like, yeah, damn, the, the, the town ball season's over. So it, it's, it's always, like I said, it's, it's, it's a mixture of, you know, the Coney Lakers, they're pumped it's over because they they're standing on the mountain, right? They're they're the state champions, but you know, that that's a family over there too and you know, they're experiencing that right now too. They got to have the best Monday night that any of them have probably had in a long time celebrating with teammates and hoisting a trophy and but life goes on for them now too, right? Yep. Now it's kids activities, it's you know, for a lot of those guys, it's coaching you know, different activities, uh, school and yeah, it, it's just, you know, it, it's always, you know, summer in the fall, right? It, it's a little bit of a change, uh, in life. And it's, it's always sad when, uh, when it does officially come to an end. Yep. So before we run out of time, uh, because I know we're going to get feedback and I've been asked about this personally, we do have to spend just a couple of minutes on next year. And here's how yeah. I want to approach this. And I've been on record. In fact, I may have been overserved and voiced this opinion to a certain uh, uh, state board member. <laughs> I think what's being attempted, while I completely understand what they're trying to do, and I want to be on record saying that I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to give. You're trying to go Minnesota State High School League, where you want to ha- want it to be fair for everybody. I get it completely. Here's my fear, Jeremy, and I, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but I think what you're trying to do is, A, you're trying to fix something that's not broken, but B, I think you're trying way too hard to give a shot to somebody that might 
may or may not be deserving. And here's my point. If you really want to look at this on the on, on the grand scheme, and I'm not just some, okay, I'm going to say this. On my, it's my show. I don't care. I'm not just some <laughs> asshole that doesn't know what I'm talking about. I've been a part of town baseball since I was 17 years old as a player and then as a manager and now as the third assistant first base coach for the Faribault Lakers. All right. I've been around, I've been around town baseball for over half of my life. And I'm here to say this. If you want to fix it, here's what you do to make it, to make the playing field even for everybody. First off, get rid of population points altogether out the window. Who gives a, who gives a, Oh, I almost said a bad word. Who gives yeah. a crap? We, we, we get three points because of the prison population in Fairville. Not that I have an agenda. Okay. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. 30 miles outside from home plate, 30 miles. There you go. Anybody that you sign within that radius, zero points on the board. If you want to keep the success points, I'm all for that. Sure. Go ahead. And then guess what? And I'm really going to throw you a curveball here outside of that 30 mile radius. Okay, inside the 30, nobody counts. Outside of the 30, you go ahead and you sign whoever the hell you want. You want to sign some Division I minor league baseball player that lives in Hibbing? You go right ahead. But the thing is, so does the team in Ortonville. They've got the same opportunity to sign somebody's buddy that – because here's what my fear is, Jeremy. My fear is what's going to end up happening is a lot of these fringe teams – um, I'll just use us as an, as an example. You make us play Class A, well, A, we're not going to be able to compete, but I'm worried about teams that are like that that are going to fold. So then what's what's going to end up happening? You're going to have a bunch of teams that are going to end up just saying, well, we can't compete right now, and then you're going to have a bunch of guys not playing baseball. And I'm here to say in the grand scheme of things, baseball needs as many kids playing the sport right now than they ever have. The floor is yours. How much time do we have? As much time <laughs> uh, yeah. as you would like, because I got I because I can guarantee you, this is probably the platform to voice that opinion more so than ever. Which is why I saved it for the end of the conversation. The floor is yours. Yeah. Take as much time as you want. Um, again, I, I so I understand too what they're trying to do. I don't always understand the magnitude. I, I hear board members say that. We work for every team in the NBA, not just certain teams. And, you know, my response always, well, I didn't know you were just working for certain teams. That's news to me, right? I mean, that it's, it, it's my biggest disappointment was with how poorly it was handled and pushed through. Yep. Um, you know, if you truly work for the entire state of amateur baseball, I would have thought this would have been something you would have presented at a board meeting and you would have said to your region commissioners, regardless of class, here, here's what we're looking at. This is something that we're proposing. We want you to take it back to your leagues, and we want to get feedback. We want to hear from our constituents because ultimately that's what we are. You know, we're, we're constituents. And um, they didn't do that. This was something that was was kind of hammered through and – Maybe happened at a Friday night uh, pre-state board meeting, right? Yep. Where it was almost like the votes were, were were tallied that night and then brought to the floor that day. And you know, I, I look at it. You're you're coming off, um, you know, a, a very successful 2021 tournament out of COVID. Um, we got a little bit more out state. Had a very successful tournament in Faribault, Dundas, and Meesville. We followed it up with the 100th state tournament. We had 28,000 people, the most since 1954 or whatever it was. Yep. And now this year, again, you're riding that momentum and you had 26,000. And, you know, as, as much as, and, and I'm not going to say any team, but as much as we want to do this, maybe for the quote unquote little guy, I'm with you. I, I don't know that it's helping. You know, I, I heard someone once tell me, well, you know, man, if, if we make it, we'll bring a busload. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. A busload's 60 people. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I want, you know, I mean, Waconia, Young America, Jordan, ha- each had 20 busloads. And, you know, that that's what you want. So 
um, I, I do respect those state board guys because I don't envy them. And, you know, there are nine individuals that I have respect for that I feel like I can have those conversations with, guys that I have had those conversations with. And let me pause um, you right there because this version of the state board in someone that has had to deal with them for one specific event that will remain nameless that used to take place uh, that I hope to bring back one day. But for, for this current version of the state board, this is the easiest version of the state board as far as a communication aspect, as far as uh, a, relata- a relatability aspect and, and working with aspect. F- I'm telling you right now, 10 years ago, that was not the case. It it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it, it specifically was not the case. And I'm not going to name names, but that's... Th- that's why I think they have become so receptive to what people want. And and I get it. Their their heart is in the right place, and they're trying to do the right thing. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but please continue. No, and, and I, I think basically everything that you just said is is what I would echo. Again, I, I don't... I don't think that there's you know any kind of maliciousness or, or or anger in doing this. I mean, I think they're truly trying to figure out a way how can we make amateur baseball even better. Yep. Right. Yep. And you know, my only comeback right now would be, well, I <laughs> if if you can tell me how, you know, I, I I'd love to know about it. And maybe this is going to work. I don't know. Um, I know it's going to break up leagues doesn't matter what they tell you. No, you can still have your league. You can still play each other. Well, no. And, and I get it. You know, I always get reminded by someone, well, Jeremy, you're part of the Crow River Valley League. And, you know, everyone would love to be the Crow River Valley League because it's one of the best leagues in the state. But, you know, we've got three teams going to A next year. We've got six teams going to B. We've got seven teams going to to C. Um it's never going to be the same with them, right? No. We've got no. a meeting next week where we've got teams proposing to get into our league, one team, because they, they might get siphoned off to, like, the St. Cloud area to play in a section. Wow. You know, we, I, I did that crap for Young America for two years where we're traveling to Burnsville and to Egan on a Tuesday and Wednesday night. And I'll tell you what it did was, you know, you had guys not showing up as much. I mean, you know, guys work. I mean, guys have commitments. They, and I, I just think that I know they have a plan. I know there's stuff that they have in place, and, and they have talking points that, that they're going to combat it. But it, it's not going to be the same, and that's okay. Maybe not everyone wants it to be the same, but I'm still not convinced that it can be better. I hope it is. Yeah. And I would love to say two or three years from now, yeah, you guys were right. I, I overlooked that, but I just don't – I don't yeah. know because ultimately I think what's going to happen to what you said, I think there's going to be – I think we're going to see some teams that are, are maybe going to fold. I think some of these, these true Class C teams that we're talking about, you know, everyone always says, well, you know, the baseball isn't going to be as good. I, you know, that – I'm not necessarily – you know, that's not as big of a – of a worry for me, but I just, you know, some of those teams with those lower point totals, I don't really know if it's going to give them a better opportunity to get to the state tournament. You know, it, it's going to probably give the, you know, the top three or four C teams in that section, maybe a little bit, but it's not going to give the bottom four or five. Well, that's they're just going to be it. In the same. They're going to be in the same position they were in last year and the year before and maybe even the last 10 years so well that's just it and I, you know and, and again I don't want to exa- uh, you know con- con- continue with my my point but I guess the way I look at it is and these are just the teams I've connected to but you're you're, you're trying to tell me that based upon your criteria you're gonna make the Shakopee Coyotes a class A team yeah. the, the, the joke of that and, and again Steiny would say he, the, all those guys would say the same thing I'm just echoing what what everyone in our league is saying they're not even. They're not even. They, they they have finished in the bottom half of the D. And we love because we're protective. We're the big brother, right? So we we're trying to protect mm-hmm. those guys. But common sense at some point has to set in with with with, with this decision making. And I guess that's my only point is let's let's think about this logically because just because this team happens to play in an area where there's a lot of people, well, that doesn't mean that they either a have the same resources as some of these other teams, but that also doesn't mean that they have the same success as some of these other teams. And that's why I hope, you know, okay, you're trying to say based on that criteria, 
what you're trying to tell me is you're saying to me that St. Patrick, the St. Patrick Irish, and the and, and the Shakopee Coyotes would have the same point total. Well, you're out of your mm-hmm. effing mind if you think that that's the case. Yeah, and I, I think, again, I, for me it goes back to where I think this was force-fed. And I don't, and that's where I think the, the, that's where I think that the state board failed. Not necessarily in making this decision because I understand the decision, yep. but I think where they failed was they did not go to their constituents and get any feedback. Yep, they just said this is what we're going to do. I mean, I know people who were at that meeting last fall that were all of a sudden like, "Wait, wait a minute, what? There, there's actually going to be a vote." You know, they, they couldn't believe it. And, you know, one of them was one of our region commissioners that I know well. I mean, he's like, wait a minute, we're not really voting on this today, right? And, you know, even a state board member that day yeah. said, said, are we, are we really voting on this today? Do we have to vote on it? So I just thought that it was something that was pushed through um, that was obviously heavily considered by certain individuals. But it was not given proper consideration to the rest of the Minnesota Baseball Association, that being the teams that make the NBA exist. Yep. So that's where more. my frustration is. I will, you know, as soon as I hang up my phone and you click send <laughs> on, you know, put this podcast, I, I figure I give it about three hours and I'm going to have two or three state board members probably calling me. Well, saying, why do you think what I... What the hell are you talking about, Stender? Why do you think I waited for us to have this conversation to the very <laughs> end? But I know, you're, I, know, I know you're a busy guy, as am I. And uh, I, I also wanted to just, A... Thank you, but also everybody, you know, because we, we do this because it's a labor of love. You know, it's not part of my job to do this, but it is part of my job to do this. And it's because I love town baseball. Uh, I want to see the product continue to grow because I've got two boys that I hope one day will will probably want to play town baseball at some point. And that's why there's so many people to thank, and we'd run out of time before we, we were able to do so. But anyone that had a connection uh, to the tournament this year, but also – to, to, to baseball throughout this entire summer. You know, there's so many people that aren't connected to things like the tournament that make these smaller teams, you know, be able to have nine guys come out and be able to play a baseball game in the middle of June when it's, you know, 900 degrees outside. There's just so many people out there that are like that that just want to see this thing continue to succeed. Yeah, and I, and I do, you know, before we go, I, I do want to make sure that we specifically shout out the folks in Green Isle, the folks in Belle Plaine, yes, yes. folks in Jordan, Shakopee um, as well for, for their work the, the first weekend. But, I mean, just three unbelievably class organizations, great ballparks, um, you know, great vibe. And every time I was in the park, there was just always a great vibe, great food, great people. I mean, no pun intended. They hit it out of the park. Yeah. Well, th- these don't I, happen by accident. You know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of people. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and, and we, we say it every year and probably sound like broken records, but it's true. And, you know, a lot of times there, there might be, you know, last week I talked a little bit about, you know, young American Jordan not being as chummy anymore. And, and that's really what I, what I mean by that. That's between the lines, right? Yep. That's not, you know, I mean, I think that somewhere there's a selfie floating of, you know, you, me, Shalupsky, Hollingsworth, <laughs> and then, you know, young America managers, Adam Kostechka and Brandon Stender after that, that game on Sunday. But yep. it, it's just th- these parks and these organizations and the volunteers and what it takes to pull something like this off is just incredible. My hat's off to all those people. Um, many of them are, are really good friends. And if, if you're upset because you had to listen to my voice for three straight weekends <laughs> at the park, take that up with Jason Schlupsky over in Jordan. He was the one who asked me to do that. Yeah. So. No, I, I, I love that. In fact, I, I think I have a video of, of, of one of your ads over at the ballpark, but case in point of what you just said, I have a photo, and I, I I'm gonna find it. And I'm gonna send it to you. I didn't take it, but someone sent it to me. I have a you know one of the one of the cutouts of the of the bush light six pack on ice, right? And I'm holding it, and I think there's two young America guys, two Jordan guys, and one other volunteer, and everyone's reaching for one at the same time because we were all <laughs> standing in the same circle. But once again, that's town ball, right? 
It is, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, this is always great. Uh, I can't wait to do it again uh, next year. And if you get that town ball itch or if something happens in the off season, you know, I'm always there for a spur of the moment. If, if we need 30 minutes, uh, something just to kind of fuel us when it's 25 below zero in winter and and we're thinking about getting back to the park. I'm your guy. Uh, and that will probably happen because of what's going to happen uh, uh, this coming summer. So, Jeremy, my man, thank you. If you want to follow him along just like I do, he's at KGLB Guy. Quick shout out to that radio station because they're saved on my uh, on my dash inside of my vehicle, and they do a tremendous job. Jeremy, you're the best ever, and we will talk to you again next summer. Yep, appreciate you, Reavers. And we can't go away with this special edition of the Weekly Scramble without me mentioning my friends at Harmony Spirits. It's the best handcrafted spirits made right here in our own backyard. And I thank them so, so very much for sticking with me, for sticking with this show throughout all of these years. And if you haven't done so yet, you need to make your way down to Harmony, Minnesota. And by the way, we're you know creeping into fall right now. Now's the time to head down for a wonderful drive on a nice warm uh, early fall slash late summer weekend to go down to that tasting room because their tasting room is spectacular. So if you're on the bike or whatever, stop in. They have a rotating menu of craft cocktails that are made there right in Harmony, Minnesota. It's a wonderful spot. But here's what you could really do to help us and our friends at Harmony Spirits. Go into your local liquor store and ask for the Harmony brand by name. We were just talking about the state amateur baseball tournament. I brought in a uh, a bottle of the barrel, <laughs> barrel-aged bourbon, and the crew said, what is this stuff and where can I get it? So I turned on a couple of new people to all the volunteers that were at the tournament um, this past weekend. And they loved it, and it was spectacular. And they're the best. Uh, if you want to find out more information, visit their website, which is harmonyspirits.net. If you go on that website, they still, I believe, have a couple of events coming up, whether it's car shows or what have you. You could also follow follow them along on all of their social media channels, and their Twitter account, at Harmony Spirits, is usually pretty active. But uh, they are the absolute best, and I thank them so, so much for supporting this show and for supporting uh, Mike and myself throughout all of these years. Harmonyspirits.net. And if you do stop into that tasting room, please please do me a favor and mention that you heard about them right here on the Weekly Scramble podcast. For Jeremy Stender, my name is Chris Reavers. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed uh, these couple of town ball editions of the Weekly Scramble podcast these past couple of weeks. It's a labor of love, and I said that earlier, and town baseball has a way of connecting so many different people through so so many different uh, ways of life. But it's really neat because of all the families that come together, all the kids that are involved, and uh, it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. So thank you so much to all of you that reached out to me, uh, both on-site at the Jordan Minimet via email, and I'm doing my best to get back to each and every single one of you. It's been a labor of love, and I really appreciate all of you uh, reaching out and also listening to these uh, episodes of the show. It means a lot to me. You have no idea how much it does. For Mike Fratelloni, for Jeremy Stender, my name is Chris Reavers. We'll talk to you again next week. And until then, cheers.